Well, good morning. So we're going to switch gears a little, talk a little bit more uh, hands-on, so spacing and, and uh, trellis. And so again, your, your goals for selecting a system is really going to be dependent on a, a lot of different factors, where you're growing the grapes, kind of what your production and quality goals are. So again, uh, your goal should be high quality as defined by your, your market. So what price point are you selling for? And so you're in a, maybe you're going for a high production and a, a lower cost. And so you're going to have maybe different uh, type of system requirements than if you're going for, uh, you know, you're selling something at uh, a high value. And uh, it allows you maybe to do some things that you can if you're at the, uh, the lower end of that. But again, we're looking for systems that are going to give you high productivity per acre. And again, a, a, a vineyard design that's a, a efficient to farm. And even if you're at a high price point, I think more and more because of uh, maybe the uncertainty of uh, future labor, uh, we need to have vineyards that really truly are efficient to farm. And again, we have a lot of equipment that uh, does a very nice job of, of mechanizing certain operations that we traditionally did by hand. So before we get started, I just want to make a couple definitions. Again, so we talk about vine vigor. And so vine vigor is actually a, a rate of shoot growth. And so when you have high vine vigor, you have shoots that are growing very rapidly. And it tends, it tends to have you know, a lot of leaf uh, uh, area on that individual shoe. And again, that's kind of what you have to think about when you pick a system, you pick a spacing. How am I going to, how is that system going to affect shoot growth? The other thing, of course, is vine capacity. And capacity is really a, a measurement of the total vegetative and, and reproductive growth of a vine. So that's everything. That's the leaves, that's the roots for vegetative, it's the permanent structures, and then, of course, that fruit production also. And again, vine size is, is again, is, is a measure of the annual vegetation growth of that plant. So what we see every year is the canopy. And that's something we can measure. But we do, what we don't see sometimes is what's happening underground, what's happening within the permanent structures. And again, that capacity refers to the, you know, any vineyard has a certain capacity, so it's going to have a, a certain growth potential, and that growth potential is going to dictate to that vineyard what the, what the kind of the reproductive capacity, and so how much yield and what kind of quality can you achieve from that system. So kind of keep that in mind, especially keep in mind shoot vigor. So again, we will talk a little bit more about this as we go forward. But again, I think Andrew talked about some of these. You know, the soil itself really dictates a lot about potential growth of that, that site. And again, a big component of that is, just like Andrew said, is, is what's the total availability of water in springtime? So if you have a, a very deep soil that has high water holding capacity and you're in a high rainfall area, there's a lot of water in that soil. That amount of water is going to dictate maybe how rapidly those shoots are going to grow, as opposed to if you're at a very similar soil in a low water fall area, there might not be that much water in there. You're going to actually induce maybe a stress earlier, and so that stress is going to dictate how that shoot may grow, or those shoots may grow. Now you could counteract that by putting a lot of water on and you might get the same kind of growth that you would in a high rainfall area. But that does make a difference depending on where you're growing your grapes. Again, climate is a very important factor. Uh, again, the warmer the climate sometimes has two things. Increases water demand. Uh, it also influences uh, fruitfulness in the, in the plant. And, and quite a few other things. Uh, is there wind? wind? We know wind has a great effect on on shoot growth, and again, some varieties are more prone to uh, the suppression of, uh, of growth by wind. Again, rootstock has a, uh, has a very high uh, um, difference between some of the rootstocks and, and their inherent vigor that they might impart on a vine's growth. And again, so that becomes another component of, of, of a design. Again, variety, the same thing. Some varieties have much higher uh, growth potential. And so things like Cabernet grow much more vigorously 
than, than maybe, let's say, Pinot Noir. Or we take a variety like Chardonnay that really has pretty good growth potential until you put it in a cool, windy site. And it's a variety that is very uh, sensitive to winds, so you get a more suppression of, of that growth potential for that site. Again, the spacing, how you space the vines, also has a, a component, and that's really kind of what we're going to talk or I'm going to talk about today. And we'll maybe discuss a little bit more of that once we get out in the field tomorrow. And as I mentioned earlier, farming practices can have impacts also. So things you do as far as irrigation and fertilization can boost or decline in, in shoot vigor. How you prepare a site may influence the rooting depth. And by doing that, may influence that, that vine's ability to pick up water and pick up other things from the soil. And again, cover crops, because they do have a, a competing effect with the vines, can also influence maybe potential vigor and a site. The top of that got cut off, but uh, this is a, a, a slide that, or a table that's pulled out of uh, Dick Smart's book, Sunlight into Wine. And again, it represents kind of an ideal type uh, canopy. So these, these were kind of figures that he put out, actually now quite a few years ago. I think this came out in the 90s, early 90s. But again, he did a lot of evaluation of vineyard sites around the world. And again, kind of the bottom line is sometimes the best quality comes out of sites where you have moderate shoot growth. So as you get weaker shoots, sometimes you have lower yield capacity, lower ripening capacity. And on the other side, probably more common is when we have very high shoot vigor, we have some of the effects that we already talked about is low fruitfulness. We have a great influence on, on, uh, on uh, maturation and maybe even uh, flavor composition in the fruit. And so again, these are kind of figures that people have used uh, to, uh, to kind of you know, shoot density so we know that uh, if, if down the, a row, there's about five shoots of uh, shoot lengths are in that 15 to 20 node. Uh, and, and a lateral shoot development is relatively minimal. So again, the higher vigor shoots have a tendency to produce a lot more lateral uh, shoots. Again, that produces more uh, density in a canopy, which is a negative effect. And again, so when you do these type of evaluations, and these are done post abrasion to harvest, you look at a canopy, you can kind of use these then to kind of gauge where you're at, and what kind of potential vigor you you have in a site. Yes? So, so these, these are baseline numbers for an average? Well, these are like baseline for the ideal canopy type. And so the goal sometimes when you're picking and designing a vineyard, if, you, if, you know, if you're in this, you kind of have, you, if you know you're going to have moderate shoe vigor, you're probably kind of in this ballpark. The problem is, is when you have a low vigor site or you have a high vigor site, how can you adapt your vineyard design to maybe get closer to this. And so especially, I mean, typically around the world, we've had more problems with high vigor sites. And how do you manage high vigor, especially when it's, uh, you have hard time to control uh, that early uh, uh, growth because you might have a lot of water in the soil. Again, these are just kind of ballpark figures and it, it's, it's, it's something to consider Again, some of these things, some of these parameters are harder to measure than others. Uh, but again, uh, what we have used a lot is pruning weights. And again, it can be done different ways. It can be done as a measurement of pounds of pruning weights per foot. It can be done as, uh, as uh, pruning weights, uh, fruit to pruning weight ratios. And so we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this and how that may impact your decisions. So again, uh, let's talk about spacing first. And so again, in, in, a, in a vineyard, there's the row spacing. So how close are the rows together? And then there's the vine spacing. So there's two different components of, of that. And again, the row spacing traditionally has been based on what, what kind of farm equipment are you going to use? And there was a time where we were maybe more limited in what was available. I mean, now there's probably more different types of equipment than there ever has been before. And so you're not really limited. If you want to have close rows or far, wide rows, uh, there's all kinds of different equipment. Again, there's a, a 
you know, essentially a canopy is kind of like a solar panel. You're trying to collect sun most, the most efficient way. And so how are you going to display that canopy to kind of optimize that leaf surface? And so the more dense your canopy, sometimes those leaves aren't really working to full capacity. So can you modify that in a trellis system that's going to maybe improve that? And of course, again, this operational efficiency, how are you going to put that vineyard together to kind of maximize that? The vine spacing is really should be based on kind of anticipated vine vigor. So how vigorous are those shoots going to be? More vigorous, maybe they should be further apart. Or if they're low vigor, they should be closer together to try to get maybe more to that ideal situation of, of, of shoot growth. So again, what, what kind of equipment is going to be going down the row and how wide is it? And so especially uh, if you jump back 30, 40 years, there wasn't that many, there wasn't the same variation in, in type of uh, equipment. And so really we had wide rows because that's the kind of tractors we had. And so uh, most, if you went around California probably in the 70s, I mean, most vineyards were 11 to 12 feet. Uh, and, and so that, that's changed a lot. There's a lot of different types of equipment now. You can get as close as you want. Here's a five foot vineyard. So you get very narrow tractors to go down here. The question sometimes if you have, it's fine if you have a small vineyard, but what happens when you're farming thousands of acres? How many tractors are, are you going to need to, to farm that? And so we do have now the ability to use these harvesters chassis to, uh, to, to carry uh, you know, tillage implements. And so we can, can do now multiple rows does increase the efficiency, but again, this is also another five-foot spacing of the rows. The other question is, how are you harvesting that vineyard, and how are you going to most efficiently take that fruit, harvest that fruit, and take it off that, that site? And so that's the other consideration. If you're going to, are you going to do that by a hand crew, taking, uh, pouring it into a bin, or are you going to, Use a, a machine, and then if your rows is co closer together, you're somewhat limited what you can pull down that row. Uh, we do have machines now that actually have you know on on board uh, gondolas, and so they can be fruit can be picked and 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 dumped at the end of the row. So again, all those should be considerations. Maybe the thing, situation you don't want to get yourself caught into is have something where you're very limited and you have to hand carry things out, which is fine if you've got the availability of labor and you can afford to pay for that. But more and more, we're having a lot of competition for, for uh, labor and the price is going up. And so again, how are you going to design that vineyard to get that fruit off and in the winery most efficiently? So again, here's a scenario if you can just compare 100, this is a 100 foot space on both of these blocks here. Here you've got 10 9 foot rows, here you have 16 6 foot rows. The difference here is to cover that area, there's 11 passes of a tractor, here there's 17. Because you have more vines here, you've got 60 more, well here on tractor, any, any tractor operation or mechanized action, you're going to have maybe 60 more percent more time to travel through this site than this site. Same thing, you've got more vines here, so if there's more time pruning, there's more time doing any kind of hand manipulation of those vines in their tighter row spacing versus the more wide. So again, those decisions need to be made. Again, we do a lot of spraying in vines, and so again, we can get around some of this by uh, doing multiple row operations. So here you see a, a four row sprayer. Obviously being able to cover this field much more effectively than if it was a single row type machine. Of course the other thing is, is, uh, is, uh, is light interception efficiency. So here you've, you've got 12 foot rows here these are all VSP type canopies. This actually was an old vineyard that was uh, 6 by uh, 12. Uh, they converted part of this vineyard to uh, a VS, well, the whole vineyard to a VSP, and they actually then had so much space they put another row. So now it's got six foot rows. Again, this is kind of a low to moderate vigor site. 
And again, so this is a much more efficient as far as uh, uh, they've really improved the, uh, the yield capacity of this on a per acre basis uh, by, by doing this type of conversion. Now, when you move those closer together, you, there's still, you kind of have to keep this ratio in mind. So the height of this canopy from the bottom of the canopy to the top, this ratio should never go above one. Otherwise, this wall of canopy here will shave this fruit. But as long as you stay, uh, that ratio stays uh, below one, uh, there's not that shade type effect. So as you move the rows closer together, there's been a few spacing studies. And so typically, there, there is, there's a, a percentage increase as you move those closer together for any given you know, uh, spacing down, down that row. So again, the in-row vine spacing should be based on, on anticipated vine vigor. And again, those vines should be put close enough together to kind of avoid uh, you know, gaps down that row. And so you have kind of a consistent shoot vigor and consistent production down that space without any gaps. So here you see a canopy, uh, moderate type vigor, uh, nice exposure. So this is kind of more of an uh, ideal type situation. Just to compare, this of course is a non-trellis vineyard. This is actually, these are head trade vines. But again, if you look at this from an efficiency point of view, I mean, there's a lot of wasted space that a vine could be there. And you would actually improve the, uh, the yield capacity of that site. So again, Close enough together also to provide enough buds to be left on that plant to, again, moderate that shoot vigor. And this is a, I like this uh, demonstration or this graphic because it, it, it shows you the effect on shoot vigor of, of in-row vine spacing. So let's say for, if, if the optimum for this site was 48 inches, these are unilaterally trained vines. And so here you see nice, nice uniform shoot growth. Uh, not too much uh, lateral development. Uh, as we move those vines closer together, what happens? We now don't, count, don't have the capacity to put the same amount of buds on that plant. That plant responds by growing more vigorously. And so now we end up with a, a very dense canopy that now either has to take you know, more management practices to open them back up. So potentially a loss of yield and maybe a p loss of quality. On the other side, if we move them too far apart, now we have too many buds for the vigor of this site, and we have a lack of uniformity of shoot growth, and probably poor ripening capacity because we're trying to put too much fruit and don't have adequate canopy to, to ripen that. So here's another example. This is actually a mechanized vineyard in the Central Valley. And this was a, is an 8 by 10 spacing, and it's been mechanically pruned for a number of years. But, so this space to here, to here is 8. There's about a foot here that has no cord on, and there's another foot that has very poor shoot growth. So kind of like the same thing. As we, they've let more and more buds on this plant, vines have a tendency when you, and these again are, are unilaterals, which sometimes uh, this might have been more balanced. It was a bilateral. But... As you get these cordons, if they get too long, you, you can start losing the shoot uniformity. So this vineyard probably would have been better off as a 6 by, this was an 8 by 10. It might have been better off as a 6 by 10 because they would have maybe ended up with more uniform shoot down that course of that row. So again, as we, as we change the spacing, either down the row or between rows, we get different vine numbers. So here you, again, you see two spacings, a, a six by, or a four by 12 and a six by eight. They've got the same amount of vines per acre, but you're gonna get a different response between those two vineyards on how those vines grow. And here's another example of a, of a uh, very tight spaced vineyard on a high potential uh, vigor site. 
And again, this was picture was taken in the springtime. You can see a very high shoot vigor, a lot of shading in here. Here's that same vineyard once it's been hedged, so it's opened up now. But again, maybe this wasn't the best spacing. And there's a lot of components to that too. And so there's, there's a, a trellis and spacing, there's a, a rootstock component. And so it's how do you put all those factors together to get you the kind of shoot growth and, and, and openness of a canopy without having to come through and do a lot of uh, canopy management. So ideally, you'd like to minimize the hedging and maybe minimize maybe some of the leaf pulling and other things that you have to do then to manage that canopy to get it back open. You can still produce good quality. It just takes more effort to keep that canopy open and, and getting light on the buds and the fruit to, to get you the kind of uh, quality you're looking for. So again, as we move vines, uh, we put more vines per acre. We actually get more, le less yield on a plant basis. So it's not, you know, more plants, more yield. It does go, the, the, the yield per vine actually goes down. But the yield per acre will go up to a certain point. But for any vineyard, there's always a maximum. And if you put more vines, you don't necessarily get more yield. And like we showed earlier, if you're getting them too close together and don't have enough buds on that plant, you can actually then, th that vine responds is by growing more vigorously. And you actually have a, sometimes not so much a loss of yield, but but you get a loss of quality because you're starting to promote more lateral shoot development and you're getting more shade within that canopy. Now let's talk a little bit about row orientation. So what direction are you going to put those rows? Again, there's a lot of factors. Uh, you know, a lot of our parcels are, are kind of rectangles or squares and so, especially if it's a rectangle, is it going to be row length or is it going to be long versus short? So from an operational point of view, you like to have long rows. That's less turnaround time. You can farm it a little more efficiently. Of course, we grow a lot of vineyards on hillsides. And so how's that slope going to dictate that row direction? Are you going to go across slope to maybe on a mild slope to maybe minimize some erosion problems? Or is that slope pretty strong that then you want to avoid maybe equipment slippage and problems uh, you know, moving through that vineyard and you're going to go up and down that slope. And if you're going to go up and down that slope, then how are you going to manage water flow within that site to, again, minimize uh, maybe erosion problems. Again, soil variability. So on a site, rarely do we have really uniform soils. And so that variability in that soil is going to dictate different growth rates, different shoot vigors. And so Again, in your design, are you going to try to block some of that out, or are you going to be able to manage that somehow? And so again, maybe on a, in a drier area, you can manage that with irrigation. In a wetter area, we have wet, some really wet areas and, and more dry areas, it's going to be a little more difficult to, to do that with irrigation. But again, the, the other thing, of course, is prevailing wind. If you're in a very windy area, and it's having an influence on, on shoot growth, you're better off with perpendicular rows, and especially if you have VSP type canopies, there is a point where that, that wind will lift up and go on the top of the vineyard, and so you actually get some wind breaking uh, once that canopy is developed. Again, a big thing is, is sunlight interception, and so as you move the direction of those rows, you get different type of light you know, capture on that canopy, and again, you get different effects of uh, sun and heat on the, uh, on the canopy based on the time of day, and also uh, the effects of potential sunburn issues. And again, uh, there's a lot of these factors here can have an influence on ripening. So again, can we change that row direction to kind of get us in a position where we're going to maybe minimize some of the problems and be efficient in capturing light? So again, the sun comes up in the morning. So this would be on a north-south maybe. It's going to be on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the east side of this canopy here. This is the cooler part of the day, and here's solar noon. And then in the afternoon, the sun's going to be on this, uh, on this uh, west side of the canopy. So again, this is also going to be your hottest part of the day is going to be sometime 
depending on where you're at, probably uh, you know, mid, after, mid to late afternoon. So where's that fruit going to be, and what kind of trellis do you have? And again, if you have uh, areas where you have maybe more potential for a sunburn, how are you going to design that vineyard, and maybe can you use orient, row orientation to influence uh, maybe and minimize some of these problems? So again, when we get hot temperatures, especially here at the, when fruit is kind of full size but still green, has very high potential for burn. And so this is what we'd like to minimize. Uh, the other thing, of course, is not only the loss and desiccation of these berries, but this excessive heat on, on fruit also has an effect on both color and different flavor components. And so again, we'd like to minimize some of this damage. And again, so there's two things here. One is it's the uh, efficiency of, of, and uniformity of the light reception as you move that row direction. So typically uh, east-west rows are kind of maximize that, that, uh, that difference as opposed to north-south where it's, it's more even light reception. Uh, then the other side of it is, is, is the sunburn risk. And so as you move that, and it's where, the, where is that afternoon sun going to be on that canopy? And so we, people sometimes like to have north-south south rows because it's pretty efficient in picking up light. But it does have a, 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 you know, high burn potential on, on the west side of the canopy. So again, a northeast to southwest direction can, can moderate that and maybe minimize some of that potential burn if that's a concern for that individual site. So again, how do you put all these components in place to kind of maximize the, the benefits you're looking for, but then also minify, minimize some of these negative aspects? Now let's talk a little bit about trellis. So again, what is the, what is the goal of a trellis system? Again, we're, we're putting in something to, to support that vine, so it's to support the permanent structure of that vine, but then also to support that canopy, to kind of facilitate whatever cultural operations you're going to conduct in there. Our goal should be, again, to maximize sunlight exposure of that canopy. And again, we, we know that different trellis systems can, can change the canopy microclimate so, and especially the, the climate around that cluster, that developing cluster. And so you could either increase shade, reduce shade, or sometimes you can actually have an effect on also the humidity and, and temperature of that developing fruit, again, by some of these different trellis configurations. And again, what we're looking for is trying to balance the amount of shoot growth, potential shoot growth you have to, to kind of maximize all these things we just talked about to get you the kind of the, the highest yield and, and, and the kind of fruit that you're, you're looking for. And so again, we know that uh, from a light point of view, the more dense that canopy is, the less light you're going to have in there. So you heard, heard several things. You're going to have reduced fruitfulness, maybe reduced color. Uh, uh, all these other things that have an effect of light. Again, there's a temperature effect oftentimes too. Uh, but, and also the, from a disease point of view, uh, as you get more dense, dense canopies, you're reducing some of the, the air movement through that canopy. And so again, you, you kind of accentuate uh, maybe some of the, the fungal pathogens that you potentially could have in that system. So again, how can you modify that trellis to maybe maximize the light, minimize some of these other things, and again, get you where you want to be? And again, we always talk about vine balance, and so it's really what kind of leaf area that site has. How can you maximize the exposure of that canopy and that fruit to get you the kind of uh, yield that you're looking for? And so again, what we use a lot is, uh, is fruit to, to pruning weight ratios. And again, that kind of still gives us kind of a, a gauge for production efficiency. We're pretty good on, on uh, 
hand pruned vines, as you start going to mechanized systems, sometimes it doesn't work quite as well because you're not pruning off all that annual growth. And so what, what that, that pruning weight is, is it's, it's an estimation of, of your canopy. So what kind of canopy did you grow? And that's what we're kind of looking at. Did we have enough canopy for the kind of fruit that we we're hoping to get? And so it, 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 on an annual basis, it does kind of put you or gives you a feel for where you're at. Some of these other things could be useful too. They're harder to, uh, to, to measure. So, you know, exposed leaves versus total leaf area. Again, we'd like to maximize the exposed leaf area because as leaves get more shaded, they're not doing as much as if they were if they were more exposed. Again, exposed clusters over total clusters. I mean, depending on how much, how, or how warm your site is, uh, the, the cooler the site, maybe the more exposure you want, as long as you don't get excessive temperatures. Uh, the hotter the site, you may want a little bit more leaf protection to prevent uh, some of the burn and the, the high temperatures that you would get if you had too much exposure. And so again, we've used things like yield to pruning weight ratios to kind of give, give us a feel for where we'll be at. So again, uh, this depending on, it's generally four to eight would be kind of uh, within the ballpark of uh, Healthy canopies, good fruit load. As you get below three, maybe they're undercropped. And so as you undercrop, especially if you have high vigor and you're undercropped, you might actually be, uh, it, it might be also having maybe a, an effect on your uh, rate of ripening and may not be producing the kind of fruit you're looking for. Uh, on the other side, if you're overcropped, maybe you don't have enough canopy. I will say that as on mechanized systems, and even I've seen other vineyards that have consistently been at 10 or higher, and it doesn't seem to, on some sites, to be that much of a, of a, ne a negative factor. So again, it, it's really kind of important to know your site. But again, where we've gone over the years, so when I started, all the vineyards looked the same in wine grapes. They were all sprawl canopies. And so what, where, we, where have we gone? Um, sprawl is nothing wrong with sprawl uh, if you've got the right kind of shoot vigor that gives you the exposure you're looking for. But again, with higher vigor uh, and these, uh, these dense canopies, I mean, they didn't produce the kind of wines that people were looking for. So what, what did we do? We went either to horizontal splits or a lot of what we went in maybe lower vigor sites was to VSP, which is good. Uh, allowed us to put rows closer together, got better yields on a per acre basis. Uh, but again, as vigor was uh, on some sites where vigor was too high, you're taking all that canopy and putting it in a little box. And so you've created a lot of density that then requires more work to open it back up. And so we've looked at, the people have looked at uh, vertical splits. And now we're looking at, uh, how come all my slides got cut off here, Con? I should have brought my Apple machine because it would have worked. Uh, this is a high high trellis. So I'll get, show you another example of these here in a minute. So again, uh, yeah, it would be great. So the non-trellis vine, the old system of one point everybody used, nothing wrong with that system, but what is it? It, it, it restricts, or maybe it doesn't restrict, but it, it takes time to develop that head. And so... So there's nothing wrong with this. It could give you really good quality. It give you nice exposure. It just takes time to develop that system. And it doesn't really maximize maybe the, the production efficiency of that site. So here you see an old Zen vineyard. Uh, actually have, has a really nice light interception. Uh, can produce really nice quality wines. But again, they're relatively low producing vineyards. So let's look at the single curtain. So We've seen different variations of uh, the old two-wire system, uh, different heights, uh, but this would maybe be uh, a system that's still in place, especially in the San Joaquin Valley and some of the older sites. Uh, uh, again, can be relatively productive. Uh, typically in the coastal, we've gone from maybe this to VSP, and on, on low to moderate sites, bigger sites, this actually could be a very good system. Again, uh, the lower the, si the vigor of the site, maybe we, we put the rows closer together, we, we put the vines closer together down the row, and we've actually gotten very good yield responses and actually improved probably quality of some of these vineyards. In, uh, in windy areas, 
the system actually has a little bit of a break uh, within the, if it's the orientation's right and has been very effective. The problem with the VSP is too, if you're in a hotter site and depending on your orientation, it has a high potential for burn on that afternoon exposed site. And again, the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, was as you get higher vigor, uh, you get a lot of density in this canopy. So again, it's requiring more canopy management to, uh, to open up that system. So what we've seen in the San Joaquin Valley for a number of reasons, uh, for productivity, but also for ease of mechanization. So total mechanization of the pruning and harvest. Uh, this is a very common system now that you'll see in the valley. And again, we're seeing more and more of this in the coastal areas too, that people are moving to this, especially for the, the moderate price points where they're looking for to improve operational efficiency, uh, to, to have essentially kind of a, a no-touch vineyard where they're gonna minimize labor inputs to kind of, again, maximize uh, profitability. So again, this is an old picture of maybe what we don't want, is uh, relatively high vigor, a lot of density in that canopy. So again, uh, it can be very productive, but sometimes the fruit's quality, because of that density, is not where you'd like it to be. Uh, this is actually is, is also a non-positioned canopy, the Cabernet Vineyard. It's not positioned, but it's, it's Cabernet with moderate shoot growth. It has a very upright habit. It will spread a little bit. You can get actually really good exposure, very dappled light within this fruit zone. can produce really nice quality under kind of low to moderate vigor. So it's not to say that uh, uh, non-positioned canopies can be quite quite effective uh, uh, at, uh, at producing really nice quality fruit. Again, we've seen a lot of mechanization, especially in the San Joaquin Valley. We're, uh, we're seeing more and more in some of the coastal areas now. And again, when managed correctly, it also could produce really nice fruit. I think the mistake sometimes was managing that hedge. And so here you see after a number of years, really big hedges. I followed a number of coastal vineyards that did this, and so they, they always wanted to make the hedge bigger and bigger. And so especially on, on weaker varieties, they had a tendency to get weaker and weaker shoot growth. And, and over time, they lost the fruitfulness of those shoots. They got so weak that the yield capacity of those vineyards went down. We have some of these more modern ones now that they've, they've managed the, that box more effectively. And so you have to force the vine to produce the kind of shoots you want. And when, when you do that, we've had very good yield responses and quality responses of, uh, of these mechanized vineyards in coastal areas also. So again, this is that same vineyard. This is actually two different vineyards. This is the one I showed you earlier where they, and they're, they're actually approaching 50 year old vineyards. These are actually two own rooted vineyards down in Monterey County, opposite each other. And uh, so this one, they both have phylloxera too, and they've had phylloxera for about 15 years, maybe 20 years now. This one actually they, is where they had the 12 foot rows. They decided to put VSP, put a, another row down the middle on rootstock as insurance. And here 20 years later, this vineyard's still uh, producing. It's now going, it's starting to decline now, but more from canker diseases than from uh, the phylloxera problem. And on the opposite side, again, old rooted vineyard, they've just maintained their how the vineyard used to be. It's a, it's a two wire system with just sprawl. It's moderate vigor. The canopy kind of opens up. It also has pretty nice light interception uh, into the fruit zone. And so here you see this VSP that they pull leaves and they've got very nice exposure. But if you actually could walk down this row, uh, it's not quite the same exposure as this, but you can see the majority of the fruit you can see walking down the row. And so they probably produce, both produce uh, nice quality wines. Of course, uh, again, the VSP in the hotter areas, especially uh, sometimes we've had seen problems with uh, VSP with uh, burn on that afternoon side. And so again, people have tried to, uh, you know, I mean, once you're in a system, how do you modify that? And so 
People have left modified cross-arm systems, let canopy flop out to give a little bit of partial shade. Maybe better yet is to come up with some kind of cross-arm system that gives you some partial shade to that fruit and, and maybe more dappled light to, uh, to avoid some of those burn issues. Again, here's an example of uh, where they've let the shoots flop out. Here's maybe, a, my opinion, maybe a better option is to have a couple of cross arms in here, spread that canopy out. And so here, this is the afternoon side in the afternoon. And again, most of this fruit has some light on it, but it's not direct exposure. And so in a warmer area, they're, they're avoiding some of the potential losses from sunburn by using a cross arm system as such. Again, we looked at uh, vertical canopy division for VSPs. Okay, perfect. In, in, uh, in, uh, in different areas, and again, uh, we, I've run some trials looking at Scott Henry versus Smart Henry. So Scott Henry is, is vertically divided where you sh take a part of the canopy on a cane system and put it up, part of it down. Scott Henry are actually different cordons at different heights, so you have two different canopies on uh, different vines. I've also, we've also looked at the vertically separated, the Smart Dyson system, where it's a single cordon. You take half the shoots up, half the shoots down. So these are, would be examples. So here's a, a Dyson, Smart Dyson. So half the shoots up, half down. This is a, 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 a Smart Henry, where it's two different cordons, high and low. This canopy goes is directed down. This is an up, and here's a here's a uh, smart Henry or Scott Henry, excuse me. It's a cane system. Again, all these systems, when you have higher vigor, and especially if you prune them to the same uh, bud number as you were on a, a VSP type system, we saw all these systems produce uh, better production and actually improve fruit quality because we get a, a reduction of vegetative characters compared to the, the VSP. And uh, the problem is, is it does take quite a bit of work then to, to kind of move these trellis, uh, these uh, shoots up and down. And so we, we do have some growers that like these systems, but uh, maybe more limited and uh, people now are looking maybe for something that's not as labor intensive. So here's, a, here's a, a Dyson system, so you see the shoots up and down. Uh, you actually get nice exposure compared to if you took this and put all those shoots up. And so in our trials, you know, doing this got us generally average around 15% more yield and a definite reduction in, in vegetative flavors in, 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 uh, in red wines. So here's a Scott Henry, uh, same thing. Generally higher yield, uh, better fruit exposure, and uh, of course the other question is if you've got if you know you have a high shoot vigor or a high potential vigor on a site is potentially get a, make a bigger vine. So again, the bigger vine concept, more growing points. Hopefully you can moderate uh, some of the shoot growth, and so sometimes these systems work a little bit better. I mean, maybe the drawback sometimes is they're maybe a little harder to mechanize, and especially on the ones that have upward uh, shoot training, uh, there's a lot of hardware out there and a lot of cost uh, managing those, those canopies. And so again, with this higher vigor, we could put them in going down, so like a Y. People call it a GDC, but it's not a true GDC. Or you go up with typically a liar type type configuration. And again, by, by positioning shoots up and down, you, you moderate shoot vigor. And the same thing in, in those vertically split canopies. As you put canopies down, they don't grow as much as if you train them upward. And so part of this, especially with the, uh, the, the Y type systems, is you have that shoot go downward, it'll actually grow a little bit less than if you had vertically trained upward. So again, Y system, and again, this one's kind of a quadrilateral type training system where you take a shoot up and have it come on both sides. I, there's also where there's alternating bilaterals. There's S type systems where a vine comes up, train this way and this way. So again, a lot of that would be based on vigor. 
But again, if under high vigor situations, sometimes this, this vine has the ability to handle more buds, but yet still keeping enough distance between those buds to again moderate some of that shoot vigor. Uh, uh, same thing with this one, although this one, a lot of wires, this one have less wires. So this one costs more to put in, but also costs more to manage. So again, this is actually a North Coast vineyard, so it's not just San Joaquin Valley vineyards that have excessive vigor. And so this was a vineyard, a picture I took many years ago in, uh, on a valley floor, high, high vigor site uh, on Cabernet. Uh, but we could take that same vineyard and, and uh, with better management, better trellis and design, and take that into this type of, uh, this is actually a, a Y system and this Cabernet that now has about you know, three to four inch or three to four foot shoot growth has very nice exposure of that canopy and that fruit, and uh, definitely an improvement over the, the previous uh, uh, non-positioned uh, type type canopy. And again, here's a, a liar system. Again, not the same amount of shoot divigoration, but again, the fact that you can put more growing points on some of these plants, again, you can sometimes modify that, that shoot vigor to bring it down to a level that uh, is maybe more in balance and uh, will improve both productivity and, and fruit quality. And again, we get modifications of, of some of these. So sometimes a Y system, it flops, and you can get a lot of exposure of fruit uh, and burn on the top of, the, of the, those canopies. And so here you see a modification where it's not really a liar, it's not really a, a Y anymore, but they have a, a wire out here. So again, this canopy comes up and goes to either side. They sometimes will put rake wires in here to, to position those canopies outward. Again, this, this type of configuration gives a little bit more uh, shade or a little bit of protection of that fruit. To, uh, to minimize maybe some of the, 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 the sunlight issues of a y, that a Y potentially could have. So again, uh, maybe we'll talk a little bit, hopefully we get out in the field tomorrow, we, we'll talk a little bit more once we're out in the field, but again, there's other design considerations, and so again, you wanna have a, a, a system where you've got end assemblies that can hold the, the load that you're gonna put on there and not give way, and so how are those put in? Uh, not so much now, but I mean, we, we mostly most vineyards now use metal. Uh, again, wood because of the preservatives and, and the difficulty of getting the kind of quality wood that we used to get 30 years ago. I see, you, know, you see less and less wood in vineyards, and so most of the components of a trellis system are, are metal. But again, the other things to think about are staging areas. So how are you going to take that fruit out of the vineyard? How are you going to bring people into the vineyard and stage them to efficiently farm that? And so those should all be part of a, of a vineyard design. Again, turnaround space. What kind of equipment? Are you, are you going to have harvesters? Or do you have adequate space to, to, to make those turnarounds? And so again, that's really based on the type of equipment you anticipate. In my opinion, even if you're on a completely hand system, you should always anticipate that maybe someday uh, people may not be there, and, and so do you have the ability to, to mechanize if you if you need to? And so again, I mean, most of California now is me me you know, the harvest is, is mechanized, the great majority of it, and I think we're going to probably see uh, more of this in the future, even in coastal areas, is the mechanizing uh, the pruning also. So again, there's not a one-size-fits-all. There's different ways to put that design together. Again, I think your goal should be how to moderate shoot vigor to give you the kind of best canopy and uh, exposure that you want. And so again, I, I, don't, I don't think for any site there's a, a definite, this is the way it has to be done. There's a lot of ways to get to the same point. So again, all the factors need to be considered, and you'll hear about more of them as we go through the course. But again, it also has to be uh, fitting the economic and production goals of that individual site. And again, it's really how are you going to put that site or that design together and that spacing together to, to match what your anticipated vine vigor is. And that's really the key to, to putting together the right kind of package for any given site. So with that, I'll stop.
Do I have time for questions or? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. So you'll see a lot of vineyards uh, if you go to Europe or sometimes uh, different area production areas where they've got these really low cordons. It's not. I, I don't know if you've picked grapes or pruned or done any hand. It's 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 a lot easier to have something at working height. Why wouldn't you just put that wire at like four feet? It it depends on the system. So if you've got a VSP, to my opinion, it should be at a working height. If you're going to do some kind of split, then it needs to be higher. So if you, let's say you wanted, for some reason you wanted to do a Dyson system, you have to have it high enough to get enough room for that canopy below to, to, to be fully, uh, you know, to have enough canopy to ripen that crop. So if you minimize that, if you had, the problem is, it, uh, we've, I've seen vineyards that are too, too dense or they're too vigorous at a VSP, the cordon's too low, they don't have enough room to do any kind of manipulation of changing that canopy because you don't have enough space there. So then you, if you knew that, you could move it higher. Of course, the other thing is if you're going to these mechanized systems or these high cordon systems, you need, again, that height is giving you the canopy. So you have a really long, if you have very high shoot vigor, you get that, that height gives you a big canopy that really gives you then that higher capacity to produce more fruit. Well, it depends on the system. So if you limit the space that you're going to put a canopy, you're limiting capacity. But it depends on are those shoots going up or are they going down. So if they're just, if you have like a VSP, it's wherever the working height is. Now there's also, you know, if you're picking with a machine, then there's also considerations of what, how the machine is going to pick that and so, and what type of machine. So, I mean, all those things have to be put into place. But, I mean, a small vineyard that's going to be mostly hand labor, it's, different, it's a different choice of decisions than something that's going to be more mechanized. So it depends on what you're, you know, it depends on what you're looking for. So we've done a lot of stuff in the wind because I, I work in the Salinas Valley where it's really windy, and it's wind every day. And so, if you want more wind and more air movement through the fruit zone, perfect, you know, with the wind is going to give you more movement of wind. But the wind is higher within that canopy. And it's actually having a more negative effect on photosynthesis and growth. Now, if you don't have a growth problem. It's not a problem, well, but 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 it, but it, but it, it like yeah, like yeah. So if you go perpendicular or somewhat perpendicular to that, you're actually going to reduce some of that. Well, you have you have to design the vineyard to withstand that. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll reduce the wind speed within it also. So if you go in a really windy area, go, look, go, go stand in, at the end of the in avenue and then walk in a VSP especially. The wind stops and, the, and some of that leaf movement that you're talking about will stop because that wind is coming up over that canopy. The first 10 rows look like hell because they've been beat to heck. But once that canopy's up, it'll actually, you get protection. So it really depends. If you're growing Chardonnay, Chardonnay is the most, probably, it's probably most impacted by wind. And so if you have actually, where you think you're actually having restricted growth because of the wind, you actually get better production with, with the, the perp being perpendicular. 
You just have to design the system and have enough strength in that trellis to withstand that. We, I mean, we have very strong winds. We have probably some of the strongest winds in these true coastal valleys, so whether that's Santa Maria or Salinas Valley, uh, we never have a problem with vines falling over. You just have to build the trellis to hold the capacity of that load. Yeah. But, you know, we, we see a 75% improvement in just shoot growth by having some kind of, you know, break in that wind speed. Well, windbreaks are most effective, and so we went through a trend of putting in windbreaks, and now we're taking them out. Because the problem with windbreaks, they also can be very competitive. So you have root intrusion, you also have shade. And so I've done a lot of work in that area. It can be really good, and we get better growth, better production, but on the edges of those blocks, we have a lot of competition. So one side gets a lot of root competition, the other side of the block gets a lot of uh, shade competition. So you lose something on the ends, but you sometimes gain a lot in the middle. But there's, it's a management issue. So if they're not managed right, then you're better off, better off not putting them in. So we've, we've gone through uh, generational put them in, take them out. We're going to take them out now. Probably 20 years from now, people will put them back in. So it really depends on the site, what you're growing too. So some varieties are maybe less impacted than Chardonnay. Okay? All right. Yep. Well, you know, we lose most vineyards because of canker diseases, and so that's probably still our, our, our uh, biggest decline in, in productivity in older vineyards is what kind of pressure they get from canker diseases. And so <laughs> there's a lot of management decisions you can make to prolong those. I just showed you those two vineyards in Monterey County that are approaching 50 years old. They're still productive. Uh, I thought they'd been gone by now because of phylloxera, but they're holding uh, pretty tight. It's really the canker diseases that are probably going to cause their demise. So, like so. Yeah, I mean that all comes into play. I mean I've seen uh, vineyards where people are trying to maximize pr product, you know, productivity on a per acre basis, and they load up vines. You can push it to the point where, especially in coastal vineyards, you can produce too much, and the vines will do well for a while, and they just give up. And a lot of that has to be to do with the, you don't have enough canopy there to uh, sometimes put those resources back in the plants. And they do well for a while, then all of a sudden they just crash. So some of that has, you know, again, it comes back to balance. You can pull a lot, vines will do a lot, and they'll put a lot of resources into ripening that fruit at the, lot, at the expense of the vines health. And so I, I've seen really high productivity in coastal vineyards. It goes for a while. Those vineyards have a tendency to crash. And so those have a shorter life as opposed to maybe if you had that vineyard in better balance, it probably will last a little bit longer. So it's a, it's, it's a little bit of that, how much crop you want to put on there. A little bit of on some of these disease factors also. Okay. All right. Thanks all our morning speakers.